Welcome, welcome everyone, welcome to the first day of school. Today, we're going to talk about what you need in order to become an engineer. Can anybody tell me what's the very first thing you need? Anyone? How about you? A Chegg subscription. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? Hmm? How about you, little one? You need to have a strong motive. That is correct! Motive. Today we are going to talk about motive. So let me ask you something. Before you take a long road trip, what's one of the first things you check? probably how much fuel is in your gas tank, right? That fuel literally represents how far you're going to be able to travel. If your road trip's 100 miles, you need at least 100 miles worth of fuel. If you only have 50 miles worth of fuel, you're only going 50 miles. So why do I bring this up? It's because I want to get the point across that actions require energy. And big actions require big energy, right? In order to get anything to happen, whether it's a car going down the road, a rocket going into space, or you getting your degree, you need to supply the correct amount of energy to get that thing to happen. Attempting an engineering or STEM degree is a pretty big action and therefore will require lots of energy. Where are you going to get that energy? This is where your motive comes in your purpose, your reason for going down this path. It will be the supply of your energy while you're in school. So I think you should view your motive the same way you view the fuel in your gas tank, right? That fuel in your gas tank provides the energy your car needs to move forward. Just like your motive will provide the energy you need to do homework, study, go to class every day. So when it comes to your vehicle, it's the amount of fuel that will determine how much energy you can get, right? But when it comes to your motive, it's a little different. It comes down to how strong or how potent your motive is that will determine how much energy you can draw and for how long you can draw it. So what do I mean by the strength of your motive? And how do you measure something like that? Well, it really comes down to just a simple comparison. So on one hand, you have this thing that motivates you. Let's say it's to become a SpaceX engineer. And the other hand, you have all of the work, stress, sacrifice, that it's gonna to take to get your degree. Which one's heavier to you, right? Each day, you're gonna compare these two things. And if, you, and if your motive's strong enough, it's always gonna be heavier. It's always gonna be the thing that is dictating your actions, uh, giving you energy to continue on. As school goes on and the demand increases, uh, will you consistently and reliably be able to depend on your motive to give you the energy you need to keep going, right? To get you through the setbacks. You know, the thought of not getting this thing that motivates you must always be worse than anything school can throw at you. If it isn't, it's gonna be like trying to drive 100 miles with only 50 miles worth of fuel, right? You're gonna struggle. So in my opinion, the strength of a motive comes down to two things. How robust it is and how genuine it is. So number one, is your motive robust? We've all had those days where you wake up and you feel like you can do anything, right? You're overflowing with motivation and then the next day you wake up and it's gone. And whatever you started just goes unfinished. That's what I mean by robust. So a robust motive would be one that can stand the test of time, right? Not just flare out like these random days of motivation that we all get. It needs to be something that can really be relied on to not break or crack to the challenges of school, right? Something that you can really count on to get you through each day. Okay, so number two, is your motive genuine? So in order to have a genuine motive, it needs to just come from within you, right? It needs to live and originate from within you, not from somebody else. Okay, so let's say your parents are both engineers and because that's what they did, they're pushing you to do the same thing. So this would be an example of a motive that came from them, right? Not from you, not very genuine. 
So it's these types of motives that typically don't stand the test of time, right? It's usually the ones that are genuine, the ones that are, live within you, that are the ones that you can count on to give you consistent, reliable energy. So what about you? What's your guys' motive for going to school? What keeps you going to class, studying, uh, doing your homework every day? I'd love to hear. Let me know in the comments below. And also, you know, like uh, and subscribe to the channel to support future content like this. You know, I, I hope I was able to kind of change your perception a little bit uh, on the importance of a strong and robust motive. Um, if you want to know more about how it played a really important role in my process, how I was able to go from a failing student to a successful one, be sure to check out my book. I'll put a link in the description for that. Uh, but until next time, you know, thanks for watching and keep up the good work.